Welcome to our series on the secrets of the abdomen and abdominal wall control. In this series we discuss the function of our abdomen and abdominal wall in relation to back and pelvic problems, pelvic floor issues, breathing and long COVID, and other problems that patients may encounter. This episode discusses our diaphragm and breathing in relation to the abdomen. Breathing is so natural that we hardly think about it. It just happens. But sometimes we do pay attention to our breathing because we want to achieve something like relaxation or because we have trouble breathing with just a cold or maybe some lung disease. And then we find that there are numerous views on breathing. In this video, we don't want to show you the perfect way of breathing. We want to show you the role of the abdomen in breathing. This role could be bigger than expected. Most breathing descriptions show a chest motion, expanding during inhale and recoiling during exhale. This combined with the diaphragm motion, contracting and lowering during inhale and relaxing and rising during exhale. The diaphragm motion provides the major contribution to the volume increase of the chest cavity. Although this might sound quite logical, a significant aspect of breathing is missed out, with, as we will discover, major effects. By the way, for didactical reasons, animations are somewhat exaggerated and therefore not anatomically correct. In real, these motions are far more subtle. The diaphragm separates the chest and abdominal cavities. In fact, the abdominal cavity is a liquid-filled vessel, as shown in previous videos. And such liquid volume cannot be compressed. Therefore, when contracting, the diaphragm cannot move downward, unless the abdominal content in some way moves aside. And that is exactly what happens. At the same time, when the diaphragm contracts and moves downward, the abdominal wall relaxes causing the abdominal content to make space. This is what we call abdominal breathing. We don't actually suck air into our abdomen, we simply shift our abdominal content to make space for our diaphragm to come down. And then, sometimes, things go wrong and we get some injury in our abdominal area. As shown in a previous video, Paul Hodges and colleagues showed that with back and pelvic problems, the abdominal muscles, especially transversus abdominis, may change their motor patterns. These are the muscles that also control the abdominal content. So, if these muscles change their motion behavior, wouldn't that have consequences for our breathing? In the low back and pelvic pain patients you see here, you can observe how their abdomen behaves when they lift a straight leg. Yes, they all do something different. What we see here are the different patterns in which the abdominal wall may behave when there are complaints. Sometimes the abdominal wall holds more and sometimes less tension. And that in all kinds of variations. These distinct motor patterns allow people to keep on moving despite their physical problems. We call these kind of motion patterns compensation or compensatory strategies. What effect do these compensations have for our breathing? This plastic tube, with a water-filled balloon in it, provides a simple diaphragm-abdomen model. It shows that when the diaphragm lowers, the abdominal consequently expands. However, when abdominal motion is blocked, the diaphragm cannot come down. Our breathing is obstructed. As we saw before, not everyone does the same. Some have a tight abdominal wall with extra tension, thus pressing and locking the abdominal content and the diaphragm in an expiratory position. What is mostly seen is a decrease of abdominal wall tension. As already shown in the second video, the abdominal wall sags, leading to a saggy tummy. This also has effect on the diaphragm. The lowering of the abdominal content pulls the diaphragm in an inspiratory position while the ability of the diaphragm to move to an expiratory position is limited. These people need to practice activation of their abdominal muscles for expiration. 
Disturbed abdominal control is usually considered in relation with low back or pelvic pain, but, as this video shows, altered abdominal control may also disturb breathing. This may lead to a diversity of complaints that are not primarily related to low back or pelvic complaints, but there's more. Thanks to Paul Hodges and friends, we know that altered abdominal control is related to back and pelvic complaints. In addition, there is an increasing evidence that distortion of abdominal wall control can have many other causes. For example, overburdening, pregnancy, accidents or abdominal wall surgery. And very recently, another option occurred. It seems logical, but needs further study, that there is a neurological connection between the diaphragm and the abdominal wall. After all, the diaphragm needs to inform the abdomen when it's coming down. In long COVID patients, this cooperation seems to be hampered. It looks like COVID disturbs communication between diaphragm and the abdominal wall. This may explain why long COVID patients experience problems when exerting. Then the abdomen should cooperate, but it doesn't. It could therefore well be that long COVID should not be considered as a breathing issue, but far more as an integrative problem between different aspects of our body that contribute to breathing, like the lungs, diaphragm and abdominal wall. If we want to understand our breathing mechanism, we cannot neglect the abdomen and abdominal wall. Not the diaphragm is the engine behind breathing, but the abdomen. In this context, the diaphragm should be considered as a piston. The liquid pressure of the abdomen is much stronger than the diaphragm. Consequently, abdominal motion controls diaphragm motion more than the other way around. Here we are at the end of the fourth video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on the diaphragm and abdomen. Next time we'll have a closer look at the diastasis recti the excessive bulging of the abdominal wall in pregnant women and people suffering back or pelvic pain. And this all in relation to intra-abdominal pressure. See you next time!